If you've been a longtime viewer of Great Day Connecticut and Better Connecticut, you probably remember our next guest. Yes, we're so thrilled to have Christine Aranoa back in the studio. She's Hi. written a new children's book. Hello! Hi, the Purple Bear. Welcome back. Thank you. I missed you. It's I know. so it's, nice to be back. It's been nice to see somebody in person. I know. So to, the new book is great. Yes. It's called The Purple Pale. I, this, you know what, this book is uh, a book that is very close to my heart. It is about a little girl inspired by my youngest daughter who loses her pail at the beach and the pail gets swept around the world and is found by children in different countries all over and each child uses it for their specific purpose and then it actually makes its journey back to Rhode Island where it started for kind of a surprise ending so well and to tell us what you so your daughter we, we remember thirst for home was yes. your other award-winning yes. book and that you, you adopted a little girl from so Ethiopia. my youngest daughter was born in Ethiopia and uh, my children inspire everything I do obviously yeah. you know and so so when my youngest daughter, Eva, was um, two or three, we would go to the beach and she would bring her pail. And when I went to look for books uh, for her, there were no picture books with girls that looked like her playing on the beach. Right. So I decided that um, I wanted to write one because I really believe that children, all children, need to be seen in picture books, you know, representation Absolutely. matters. Absolutely. Yes. So and, and in dolls and in, everything. you know, and everything. You know, representation matters in the workplace, it, re it matters in the community, and it, it matters in schools and in children's books. So let's talk about, you know, your personal journey here, because you had a lot of rejection, and you didn't think you were smart. You didn't think you were smart enough to write a book when you first got started, right? Well, when I was younger, I had, um, I don't know if you would call it a learning disability. Um, they didn't really call it anything back then but yeah I had a hard time with comprehension yep. and so I loved to write but then I stopped because I was told that I really wasn't a good reader I didn't do well mm -hmm. in that department but then later in life I learned how to do things that would improve my comprehension and I started writing again and I just started to believe in myself and, which is good and yeah. and rejection by many publishers oh so much rejection any so person much. that writes anybody that writes knows that you have to get used to rejection because that's a part of the game well so. standard operating procedure is they send a proposal yeah. out to hundreds of publishers and maybe yeah. one or two might want it or none yeah yeah, yeah. So, so um but this is so i mean that the illustrations are beautiful uh, and yeah. i love like even this page right here so uh, i guess the purple pale made it to a market, is that the Middle East? This is uh, Tangier, Morocco. Oh, okay, yeah. And Amal is using the purple pail, her purple, purple pail to bring um, ginger root to the market. How and clever. so, you know, one of the themes of this book is that, you know, we're all connected around the world. Even though we may look different, we may wear different clothes, speak different languages, eat different foods, you know, inside we are all connected. And in this story, what connects us all is a little purple pale. So the, the illustrations. Let's go back to that because they're mm -hmm. stunning. Who did the Who did the illustrations? Nikki Leanadu is the illustrator. She's award winning. She's from Greece, and we connected. She read the story and she wanted to illustrate. And I mean, her illustrations are just stunningly yeah, and, beautiful. And do you have something in mind, what we, or you just say, "Here are the words. Do go no, go for it." No, there was a lot of research. A lot so, of research. Yeah, a lot of research. So I also Purple Pale also travels to Ethiopia, obviously for personal reasons. Sure. And Alamitu, which is my daughter's name, finds the pail and she uses it to pick coffee berries. And so in each country, you know, there's clues to help you d find out where Purple Pail is. This is India on the Gan Ganges. And um, there's just a lot of uh, children can, can learn a lot about the countries. And if you go on my website, you can click on the interactive map and find out more about where Purple Pale goes. So there's children from all over the world here. And then there's a surprise ending at the very end. Here's Mexico. And we go back to Watch Hill, Rhode Island, which is where Purple Pale starts, and um, you have to read to see what happens. Okay. Okay. So it looks fantastic. But it's already that. We want, so congratulations on your success. Oh, the book's thank already you. been translated into three languages. Yes. It's available all over the world, and you're going to be at the Brassworks Brewing Company in Waterbury this Saturday at 2 p.m. This Saturday at 2 p.m., which I have to have to be uh, give all the information. That's my husband's brewery. Oh. oh okay. okay. That's great. And so they're having a spring extravaganza, and 
I will be there signing books and every book that is purchased comes with this purple pail that the reader can put their initials on, just like the purple pail in this story. I love it. That's so wonderful. So, Terrific. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you it's so much for having me. It's always a pleasure to see you. Me. Come back, yeah. come back, come back. I